Hello, Math Study students, and welcome to your online lesson. Today, we'll be talking about area, which is a continuation of our last video, where our learning intention was to talk about both perimeter and area of two-dimensional figures. We discussed perimeter and looked at some examples in the last video, so today we'll be talking about area of two-dimensional figures and looking at some formulas and, ex and some examples dealing with that. So up here right now, I've got... Uh, four basic area formulas. The first is our area of a triangle. And not too long ago in class, we looked at using trig to find the area of a triangle. But this is the sort of basic area formula for a triangle, which deals with one half base times height. Or you could call that base times height divided by two. Though I do feel that in general, especially when we're solving things using algebra, using the multiplication for all three of our values, the one half, the base length, and the height, makes it a little bit easier of an operation. Uh, again, on your calculator, you can do 1 divided by 2 for the half or simply multiply by 0.5. Quick way to remember this is if you know a rectangle is a base times height formula as well, a triangle is really just half of that. So if I draw just a regular old rectangle like this and I want to make that into a right triangle, Again, I would have my base here, and my height here. I can draw a diagonal. And now suddenly I've created two right triangles that should be identical because we know they would have the same heights on both of them. They'd have the same base on both of them because opposite sides of a rectangle are going to be congruent. And they would have the same um, hypotenuse as well because they're sharing that hypotenuse right here in the middle. Therefore, I have two identical or congruent triangles. And so the area of the overall rectangle would be um, half of that would be true for each of our triangles. So that's a quick way to remember that, again, if you know that a rectangle is base times height, a triangle is just one half of that. Now, that base and height can appear either as a right triangle, where you've got your base and your height on a right triangle, or it can appear on a non-right triangle where they give you the height. But if they do that, they have to let you know that it's perpendicular. So you'd have your base here and your height there. But again, the base and the height must be perpendicular, which means they form a 90 degree angle, which is why we just need two sides when you have a right triangle. They're already perpendicular. The next figure we have here is a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a four-sided figure, much like a rectangle, because a rectangle is a parallelogram. Opposite sides are congruent, opposite sides are parallel, but they also don't necessarily have to have right angles. So a rectangle is a specific type of parallelogram. And that's why that base times height formula works so well for that. But really, any parallelogram, which includes squares, rhombuses, or just generic parallelograms, all would use this same base times height formula. Once again, like the triangle, you need to make sure that the base and the height are perpendicular to each other or forming 90 degrees. For a square or a rectangle, that's no big deal because that'll just be two of its sides that are perpendicular. But for a parallelogram or rhombus, you would need to make sure, again, that they give you that height value going straight up and down. The third figure we've got is a trapezium, which most of the time we call a trapezoid. But IB will occasionally call a trapezium. So we're introducing that word here. Um, Trapezium is also based on this idea of base times height, just like a rectangle, which again we used for a triangle as well, and a parallelogram. Um, but the problem with a trapezoid, it has two parallel bases, and they're here labeled A and B. Sometimes they'll label it as B sub 1 and B sub 2 for base 1 and base 2. But we have this one here and this one here. How do you know that those are the bases? Because they are parallel. And they'll mark parallel usually with an arrow symbol that we can see here that shows they are going in the same direction. So they have the same slope. They're parallel. But since there's two bases, we can't do base times height. What we need to do, just like if we had two grades, we need to average them. So we add them together and then divide by two. Or you can add them together and multiply by a half. That's the same thing. And then we can multiply by our height. So it's still our average of our bases times our height. And then finally, we have our circle. And circle is a very similar area formula to its circumference formula, which was 2 pi r. Well, you'll notice there's a 2 in it, but this time it is an exponent. So instead of 2 pi r, we have pi r squared. 
And r squared isn't r times 2, but rather r times itself. All right, let's look at some examples using these formulas. So the first thing we're going to do is find the area of the following figures. On this first one here, you'll notice we have two sides. And if I actually had the angle or the measure of this included angle on this one, we could find the area using our sine um, formula. And that would be this angle right over here. But we don't. And so we're just going to use our base times height formula with the 1 half. And so we have area is equal to 1 half base times height. Our base, in this case, is the 21. Now, a base could really be any side of a triangle. That includes the 20 here or this unknown side over here. could all be bases. They don't have to be at the bottom. But the important thing is we need to know a height that is perpendicular or forms a right angle. So our height has to be this 12 point or this 12 centimeters. Therefore, we have to use the side that's labeled 21 for our base. So we have 1 half times our 21 times our 12, and that will end up being our area of our triangle here. And that gives us an overall area of 126 square centimeters or centimeters squared for the area of this triangle. Under our next example, we've got a trapezium or trapezoid. I know that because I can see that the top and the bottom bases are parallel to each other, meaning it has two bases. Now, they give us enough information here where we can actually find the perimeter because it gives us all four sides of this trapezoid or trapezium. However, we don't need those. We just need the two bases, the two parallel sides, and the height. How do I know the two centimeters is the height? Again, because it is perpendicular to the bases. It forms a 90 degree angle. So the first thing we want to do is average our two bases. Our bases were four and seven to average or find the mean. We add them up, divide by two. You can put that all in parentheses. Now, if you're putting this in the calculator in one step, you need to let the calculator know that the four plus seven needs to get added before you divide by two. Otherwise, the calculator will just divide the seven by two and then add four after it's all been divided, and you'll have a value that's too large. And then we're going to multiply that by the height, which is two. So the average of my bases times the height right here, and that will be my area. And for that, I get, I get 11. And actually, this one could have been done pretty easily in our head without a calculator, because we see the 4 plus 7 is the 11. And you may want to do that adding before the calculator anyway, so you don't have to worry about the parentheses. But we're both multiplying by 2 and dividing by 2, so those essentially cancel out, again, just leaving the 11 here. But of course, you can also use your calculator. And our unit would be centimeter squared again, since we're finding area. All right, our last two examples are here. Uh, finding the area of the following, the first one is a parallelogram, not a trapezoid or trapezium because it has two pairs of parallel sides. The top and the bottom are parallel, and so are the sides that are slanting on the left and the right. I can mark those with congruent, or I'm sorry, parallel symbols here, and then again you can see that these sides are also parallel. Um, so what formula do we use for a parallelogram? Base times height. We have three numbers here, and those numbers would be great and useful if we were trying to find the entire perimeter. But we just need the base, and the one that's perpendicular to it would be the height. Now, the two meters sloping over here is not perpendicular to it because this is not a right angle. However, we do have a right angle here, so the 1.8 would be our height. So again, area equals base times height. Our base is 2.5. We are going to multiply that by our 1.8. We end up with a value of 4.5 as our area. Once again, putting our label down, which was meters, so we would have meters squared for area. Last but not least, we have a circle that we're going to do area for. Write down our formula for area of a circle, pi r squared. r being our radius, radius extending from the center of the circle to the outside of the circle or the circle itself, but we don't have a radius. We have a diameter. So to turn a diameter into a radius, we need to cut it in half. So I'm going to take 
and I'm going to divide it by 2. That gives me 4.35, and that would be my radius here. So now I can take that 4.35 and plug it into my formula. And that's all I need, one variable here other than the area itself. So my radius of 4.35 is going to be squared. And I'm going to definitely use my calculator to square the 4.35. And I get 18.9225. And that is exact. So I'm not going to round it. And then, of course, it has to be multiplied by pi. And again, you can leave your answer that way. However, I will say it looks a little funny because we have six significant figures because we didn't round and we don't need to. Um, but since there's so many decimals involved, we may want to round anyway. And in doing so, we would round to three significant figures and we'd end up with 59.4. And the units on this would be centimeters squared because we are finding area. Now, we can also use any of these area formulas to work backwards. For example, doing some algebra, if we knew our area already, we could divide and do a square root to find our r. Or looking back at the previous one, if I knew my height and my area, I could then find my base using some algebra. But I wanted to just demonstrate the basic formulas for each of these, show how they get set up, and then we can apply some uh, more complicated examples in class next time. Till then.